All right, our top story today. Russia has launched its invasion of Ukraine, attacking from three sides. Ukraine's government says dozens of troops have already been killed since the fighting began overnight. Charlie Daggett is on the ground in Kiev for us. Charlie, good morning. What are you seeing? Hey, Vlad. Well, pretty much all day we've been hearing these explosions. Nothing like the first volley of explosions at around 5 o'clock this morning. Uh, behind us, two fighter jets roared overhead. Uh, there are some explosions there on the horizon. Uh, now, the interior minister says Ukrainian troops have been engaged in combat uh, on the outskirts of the capital. You may be seeing those pictures now, uh, claiming that forces, Ukrainian forces, shot down three Russian helicopters that were trying to attack a military airport. By land, sea, and air, Russia launched the invasion of Ukraine by bombing major cities and targeting airports. It was the biggest attack by one state on another in Europe since World War II. President Putin spoke moments before the assault began, saying the country had launched a special military operation and its goal to demilitarize Ukraine. Convoys of Russian tanks were seen rolling across the borders in the north, south, and east. And rockets landed here in the capital, Kyiv. Ukrainian president addressed the nation, calling on all citizens to defend the country. Russia has attacked our state in a cunning way, he said, in the way Nazi Germany did in the Second World War. From today, our countries are on opposing sides of world history. There are long lines of cars, people waiting to get fuel here in the capital. And just after those explosions happened pre-dawn, it triggered a traffic jam of people trying to flee the city. Russia said it was hitting military targets, but video showed destroyed apartment blocks and dead bodies. Shocked Ukrainians couldn't believe what was happening. I'm alone at work, she says. Where will I run? Where do I go? Please tell me. Warning sirens have blared across cities, people fleeing to bomb shelters and leaving the capital in their thousands. Now, the last time we saw Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky was this morning. Uh, then he said that he would be appearing on television every hour. But then he made uh, an emotional rallying call um, saying that the people of Ukraine, uh, they want peace. Uh, but if you take away our freedom, uh, our lives, the lives of our children, uh, we will defend ourselves. And marie Vlad? Charlie, you showed us those traffic jams of people trying to get out of town. I, I saw some other pictures uh, uh, just days ago of people lining up trying to fill up their gas tanks. Uh, we know that martial law is now in place. There's a state of emergency. How is this impacting the people who are actually living in Kyiv? Because, you know, just a week ago, they didn't expect any of this to happen. Many people didn't. Uh, and Marie, just a day ago, they didn't expect this to happen. You know, people were shocked. And those those long lines of, of traffic that you've seen happened very early this morning. We went out a little bit later today. Uh, the cars were driving along uh, much quieter uh, than it normally is here. People have been told to stay at home. That's part of the martial law. Um, but it essentially means that the military is in charge. Uh, they've been told that there will be checkpoints set up around this city and other cities, including Kharkiv and other areas uh, to the east, uh, really for their own safety, because the military are in charge uh, and they are under attack. As I said, there have been attacks noted from the interior minister on the outskirts of the city itself, um, attacks from the north, from the south. Uh, and from the east, especially from the east. Uh, what this means, it means that their travel has been curtailed. Uh, people can't uh, mass in large groups. There are no protests. Um, interestingly, there, there were supposed to be media restrictions, but the opposite is true. Instead, they decide, decided that anybody who wants to be media essentially can be media, and we're able to get around as much as we, we can um, in terms, I mean, as much as we safely can. Uh, but our movement will be restricted, too. But that martial law is in place, and it went into place. It's different from um, the state of emergency that went into place at midnight last night, because then five hours later, once things started falling out of the sky and the bombs started and the shooting start, that's when martial law was put in place. Charlie, you've been reporting on the ground uh, from Ukraine uh, for quite some time now. One of the things that is, I think, sort of concerning to a lot of Ukrainians is 
the military onslaught that is represented by the Russian army. The Ukrainians had asked the United States for air defense systems. They didn't receive them. So when it comes to controlling the air, Ukrainians won't be a match uh, for the Russians. On the other hand, the question has to be, it's one thing to take a country. It's quite another to hold one. What are you hearing from Ukrainians on the ground about what they're prepared to do to defend their homeland? Well, Vlad, they are determined, and I have to tell you, this Ukrainian military is no pushover. Since around 2014, 2015, when, the, when there's the initial incursion from these so-called Russian-backed separatists, ultimately backed by Russia itself, the United States, Britain, NATO partners have been arming and training Ukrainian forces. So they are fully capable of fighting, certainly when it comes to a ground war, and they are determined. So the Russians will not be able to just march in here um, unimpeded. However, as you point out, they are far outgunned in terms of air power. And the first thing that the Russians went after in terms of their cruise missiles and airstrikes was to take out command and control centers, take out communications, take out any kind of air defense systems, which enables not only enables their own forces uh, to move in more quickly along the ground, but it also degrades the Ukrainian forces uh, of providing their own air support. But this is not the same Ukrainian military of 2014, 2015. Uh, the numbers are up. The training is up. The equipment is up. The Russians will have their work cut out for them. And then we have to determine whether this is going to be a full on ground invasion where we're going to see the capital itself toppled militarily. All right, Charlie, thank you very much.